So now, let's prepare our hearts and minds for a time of meditation. I invite you to find a comfortable position in your seats, close your eyes if you wish, and take a few deep breaths. Let go. deep, deep breath in now and hold it for just a moment. Hold it and let it circulate. And when you're ready, slowly exhale, exhale and relax and relax. For this is your time to come together, to come together with spirit, to come together and go deep inside, to allow the outer world to slip away and to slip into the world of the spiritual being that we truly are. For I am a spiritual being on a human experience, and my heart is open to the blessings, to the blessings of this human experience and to the blessings of my divinity. Breathing in and out now, the body begins to relax, settling into wherever I'm sitting and taking in another deep breath and slowly exhaling and beginning the focus on the breath then, the breathing in, the breathing out, the breath that always is, the breath that always was, the breath that always will be the breath of God, the breath of the universe, the breath of being, the breath of love, the breath of blessings. Bless it always, bless it always, for I am blessed. I am blessed in the midst of this human experience and my body relaxes even more as I take one more deep breath in. And on the exhale, I drop the belly, I drop the shoulders, I drop the jaw. Breathing in, breathing out, focusing on the breath, allowing the body to relax. If I'm finding any tension in any spot of my body, I focus again on the breath and breathe into that spot and breathe out and allow the tension to drift away. 
as my body relaxes, my mind begins to relax. The thoughts that are continuously coming begin to slow down. The thoughts begin to slow down and my awareness of my own divinity heightens. I claim my divinity and I invite you to claim your divinity. Breathing in, breathing out, settling into that place of divinity, settling into that awareness of knowing that I have all that I need to move through this human experience. Settling in now, settling into my divinity. In the midst of that divinity, I say, congratulations to the poor in spirit, for heaven's domain belongs to them. Congratulations to those who grieve. They will be consoled. Congratulations to the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Congratulations to those who hunger and thirst for justice. They will have a feast. Congratulations to the merciful for they will receive mercy. Congratulations to those with undefiled hearts. They will see God. Congratulations to those who work for peace. They will be known as God's children. And congratulations to those who have suffered persecution for the sake of justice, heaven's domain belongs to them. Heaven's domain belongs to them. Heaven's domain belongs to you. Heaven's domain belongs to me. Heaven's domain belongs to us. We sit now in the midst of this human experience in the midst of knowing that we are responsible for heaven on earth for ourselves in this human experience, right now, right now. As we move into a time of silence, I invite you to move into a time of blessing. The blessings that you receive every moment of every day, we become aware of them now. I count my blessings. I sit in the midst of the blessings. I sit in the midst of heaven's domain for my blessings. They all belong to me now. I sit in the silence, in the silence, in the silence.
Breathing in and breathing out now. Breathing in and breathing out. Giving thanks for this time of counting my blessings. I begin the journey back to this now moment. I begin the journey back to the present moment, to this now moment, to this place and time. Beginning to wiggle the fingers and wiggle the toes and taking in a deep breath and exhaling. And slowly allowing the eyes to open as I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. child of this universe the ocean dances at my feet the wind plays a melody through my hair I am loved at every turn I am kissed by mother well i am a child of this universe the sun warms me in its embrace the stars have a line for me in the sky I am honored by all life. I am held by Father Time. Every blade of grass, every shaking leaf on the tree, Every mountain top sings of the glory of God moving through me. I am a child of this universe through my breath all of life can breathe I plant the seeds with my every dream I can love at every turn give a kiss to mother child of this universe I greet the God in each face I am a channel for peace to flow oh I honor all of life yes I am one Every blade of grass, every shaking leaf on the tree, every mountain top sings of the glory of God.
David Trolley, the music ministry of David Trolley. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that really what it's all about? God moving through us, God moving through me, God moving through you in the midst of the human experience. And Antonia and I's talk about the Beatitudes today is all about how we can let God, let spirit, let the universe move through us in this human experience. How we can make this human experience more palatable, more loving, more peaceful, more kind, more just. But more of that in a little bit. First, I have a question. Well, all right, you had homework. You were supposed to bring your Bible this week. I brought mine. I have the five Gospels here. And everybody that brought their Bible, hold it up right now. Uh-oh, there goes Sue Barton. She's running. She's running to get her. Uh-oh, Ann Richardson's off to get her Bible. Everybody, uh-oh, Marilyn's getting her Bible. All right, so we'll get our Bible. and. I see everybody did their homework. <laughs> so uh, thank you. All right. Sue, dust that off, would you? Dust it off. Get the dust off of it, okay? So <laughs> really, I, I, you know, we talked about the Bible last week, and, I, and we're going to be talking about the Bible for this, this week in my next two talks. And I want to invite you to get familiar with it. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Beatitudes and where they are in the Bible a little bit. And, and I'm going to invite Antonia to go ahead and unmute herself now, because God knows when I might call on her to talk. So why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself. And uh, remember that I've asked you to read the Beatitudes, if you can find them in Matthew. Look at the book of Jonah. It's really a short book in the book of Nehemiah. And Bring your Bible next time I'm here, too. Even bring it when Jen Dickey's here. I think she'll appreciate it. So last week, we shared some background about the Bible, and we talked about the Old and the New Testament. And we really took a look at the covenants, the covenants that God made with the people of Israel. And we talked about five covenants and how we saw that we, the people of Israel, we, we, had a hard time keeping those covenants, didn't we? <laughs> we kept breaking those covenants. We kept going astray. We kept forgetting that we're spiritual beings. We kept getting caught up in this human experience. We kept letting go of the B attitudes. And what did God do? What did the universe do? Well, all right, I forgive you. I love you. I'll give you another chance. Here's my next covenant and my next covenant and my next covenant. And so as we move through the New Testament and the Old Testament, we keep seeing God entering into new covenants, the New Testament, the, 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 the good news gospel, the news of Jesus Christ, the Beatitudes. The Sermon on the Mount really sums up Jesus' ministry. And I'm going to talk about that with Antonia a little more, but first I... I want to ask you a question. In today's world of technology, this is easy to do, but have you ever made a mistake on an email address? You know, I mean, you're, you're typing an email and you, you put in the wrong letter or something and then you send it out or God forbid you're, you're talking about somebody in an email and you include them in the email and you didn't mean to. Have you ever done that? Have you ever made a mistake in who you're sending an email to? Well, you know, uh, in Minneapolis, there was a couple who decided to go to Florida to thaw out during a particular icy winter. They planned to stay at the same hotel where they spent their honeymoon 20 years earlier. And like all of us, because of their hectic schedules, it was difficult for the couple to coordinate their travel plans. So the husband left Minneapolis and flew to Florida on Thursday, while his wife planned to fly down the following day. So the husband flew down, checked into his hotel, and there was a computer in his room. So he decided to send an email to his wife. However, he accidentally left out one letter of her email address and sent the email without realizing his error. Meanwhile, somewhere in Houston, a widow had just returned home from her husband's funeral. 
He was a Baptist minister who was called home to glory following a heart attack. The widow decided to check her email, expecting condolences from family and friends. But after reading her very first email, she screamed and fainted. The widow's son rushed into the room, found his mother on the floor, and saw the computer screen, which read, To my loving wife. Subject, I've just arrived today. I know you're surprised to hear from me. They have computers here now, and then you are allowed to send emails to your loved ones. Since I've just arrived, I thought I'd send you an email. Everything is, <laughs> excuse me, everything has been prepared for your arrival tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing you then. Hope your journey is as uneventful as mine was. And P.S. Sure is hot down here. <laughs> well, <laughs> be careful. Be careful. So, <laughs> with that, see, I'm trying my jokes here still, so I hope you like them. And uh, this is the second one. And what do you think? Oh, oh, okay. All right. Good, good. Don't applaud if you don't like them, or I'll do more. So, Antony, I want to bring everybody up to, you know, where we are in, in the story here with Jesus. So we talked about the fact that uh, in the New Testament and from the Old Testament, we found out that the persecution of the Jews, which is always taking place in which they'd been exiled in the Old Testament, the persecution continued. And it was war after war. The Greek rule of the Greeks ended and Roman rule began. And we come through the birth of Jesus John the Baptist came into the picture. John the Baptist told us, change your ways as heaven's imperial rule is closing in. John the Baptist was saying the kingdom of heaven is now. Right now, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of heaven now. Not later, but right now, here, during this human experience, the kingdom of heaven is now. And John is, Jesus goes out into the wilderness and he's tested. He's tested with error thoughts. He gets these error thoughts and he denies any power to them. And it went on for 40 days and 40 nights. And in the meantime, John the Baptist got arrested. Jesus begins to be fishers of men after that. He collects the apostles and Jesus' ministry begins. And he then says, too, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is now. Crowds begin to gather. He walks to them and he sits and the disciples join them. And he brings his sermon to the uh, Sermon on the Mount to them. The Sermon on the Mount is just filled with dynamics for living. Filled with ways for us to move through this human experience. As with most stories, most things, most uh, uh, most uh, stories that come from the Bible, they can be different in different books of the Bible. When we find that in the birth story, it's, 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 it's different in, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and doesn't appear in John, and it's true about the Sermon on the Mount. There are eight or nine congratulations or blessings in Matthew, depending on whether you count the uh, 5, 10 to 12 as one or two. We're going to count it as one. Luke has four congratulations, and it has four condemnations. The book of Thomas, which is included in the five Gospels, but not the canonical uh, Bible, Thomas has parallels to the three congratulations concerning the poor, the hungry, and the persecuted. Matthew introduces four congratulations that are not found in either Luke or Thomas. Matthew says, to commend the meek, the merciful, those with undefiled hearts, and those who work for peace is quite different from congratulating the poor, the hungry, and the weeping. These four beatitudes offer reward for virtue, virtue rather than relief for distress. 
So as we move into talking a little bit about the Beatitudes this morning, because we, we don't have time to talk about all of the Beatitudes, as we begin to really look at them, and I encourage you to really take a look at them, to Google them, to, to, to Google the metaphysical meaning of the Beatitudes, to get into the Truth Unity website, and, and to look at other, go to the parallelbible.com or biblecrosswalk.com and pull up the chapter on Matthew with the Beatitudes and see how it's said in different versions, we begin to see that Jesus isn't about doing. Jesus is about being. What attitude are you bringing into your being? The be attitudes. These be attitudes are about being, how you can be in this human experience. He's telling those that are on the sermon, that are on the mount listening to him, he's telling them to metanoia, to change your thinking, to change your thinking, then your human experience will change. To know that he's telling us to be gentle. He's telling us to be gentle even when those around us are not being gentle to be kind to each other. For when those that are not gentle in this human experience have exhausted themselves, it is the gentle that will remain. When the wars are done, when the, uh, when the, uh, when the, uh, I can't, when the dictators are gone, when all of those things have left us and the gentle remain, it is the gentle that will remain. And then we'll know this human experience. We'll know we're spiritual beings in the midst of a human experience. As we look around, we see that things are still the same as they were 2,023 years ago. If you think about it, what am I doing this morning? I'm sitting here preaching the same message to you, and I'm preaching the same message every Sunday that Jesus preached in the Sermon on the Mount. I'm preaching about moving through this human experience as a spiritual being. So, Antonia is going to tell us a little bit about the first two Beatitudes. And we'll see that through the Beatitudes, Jesus recommends certain, recommended certain attitudes of blessing that will prove beneficial to all of us who accept and use them. But it's essential to remember that Jesus was dealing with states of mind or attitudes of being. He was not telling us what to do, or what, but what to be that we may gain and maintain a conscious state of blessed oneness with our highest good. Now, Antonia, good morning and welcome. It is so great to have you here with us and talk about the states of being. And I'm so excited to hear what you have to say about the first two Beatitudes. And, and, and geez, first, before you start, now you, you're working currently while you're going to school, aren't you? Yeah. And first, first and foremost, I, I bring you greetings from uh, my country, Nigeria. Today is uh, 1st October. Precisely, we are celebrating our independence uh, 63 years ago. All things being equal, Nigeria is peaceful for now. All is well. We are very optimistic and looking forward to improved government uh, relationships with uh, citizens, and we believe all is well. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to join you in this service. With love from my family to you, I say I greet you all. Now, looking at from where uh, Reverend Richie has stopped, 
the attitudes, I refer to them as beautiful attitudes. Beautiful attitudes to inculcate, to be, to live and experience and evolve. These words are not new to some of us. We have read these portions of the Bible several times uh, from um, uh, Matthew chapter 5. And looking at this Sermon on the Mount is the accumulation of Jesus' teaching. And we as Unity students are expected to follow the path, this part of his, it, of, of his teaching to evolve to our, to our every state of consciousness. The first one says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Looking at the words from the physical point of view, especially in this part of the country where I come from, a lot of people believe this poor in spirit means physically poor, physically poor. For you to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be physically poor, looking wretched, looking not really, really but you're just poor. For you to be too, to physically be rich, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Well, thank God for Eric Butterworth that threw more light on it. And we believe that is the thought of Jesus when he was on earth doing this, teaching these words. Poor in spirit. What does this statement depict? It does not depict poverty, suffering, pain, sickness. Name them. All those penury situations, no. But to be what? Having a teachable spirit. No matter how old or how young you are, we must be every time be ready to be teachable because the word of God is elastic. You cannot conclude it in just a short time that you have exhausted and known the state of heaven as an individual, no. It's quite expansive, quite elastic. And if it's elastic, what, how would you continue to accept and evolve, evolve from one stage of realization to the other, but to be what? Having a teachable spirit like a child you keep your beautiful child and you keep talking beautiful things to the child the child is so submissive listening and learning following your direction that is what christ was talking about that we should be ready we should be willing to have that spirit of being submissive into the things of spirit our desires, our willingness, our aspirations, our, our views about life must be that of a teachable spirit. Teachable spirit, not just of the physical experiences, but of what things of spirit, things of heaven bound. Things of heaven bound. That self-realization, because one cannot understand God from the intellect, just from the intellect or from our point of intelligence, but must be open within, must be open within to accept, listen, and follow that direction that comes from within with submissiveness, with humbleness, with humility, and with love then you begin to experience the beauty, beauty of life. Quite a lot of people might not be able to understand what we are talking about because most of these Bible interpretations are seen from the physical ly lyrics, but beyond the lyrics as, is what we are talking about. 
And this teachable spirit will lead us into knowing the deep things of spirit. The deep things of spirit are quite massive. I begin to visualize it, it's quite a massive. The world itself, looking at it, look at, just looking at my where I come from, Nigeria is quite big. Then talk about different over the seven continents. They talk about the universe, the one we are just, and the ones we don't even know about. So the thing, deep things of spirit is quite large and unending. And so with, without that kind of teachable spirit, we may not be able to experience that beautiful attitude we are supposed to inculcate. We must be open-minded, teachable, receptive to the truth through which we will release that imprisoned splendor, that beauty that is within, that beautiful thing that is within that words cannot explain. Even you cannot even write and conclude it is quite a massive. So that's what one of the first teaching is saying, being teachable. Now let's look at the second one, which says, blessed are the dead that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, looking at the literary world, we'll be looking at mourning, death, weeping, crying, but that's not what the word is saying here. First and foremost, a good number of us are not willing to accept this Christ teaching, except we are pushed or as a result of situations pushing us into it. I want to use myself as an, as an experience. I found out much when I was very young. One day, I didn't know much. There's a, a man that passes in front of the shop where my mother used to sell, and he used to have some skin rashes. I didn't know as a young girl, and I always will you know, laugh at him, mock at him. For a long time, on suddenly, the thing I was laughing and mocking at him for started appearing on my skin. This, my skin, I started having such rashes, and that was when the realization came that I have attracted, because that thing I was talking about, I've attracted it, and I started, and you know, this situation had not pushed me into seeking, what is the problem? How did I get this? How did I go through this? What happened? I checked my whole house. Was it where I was sleeping or my environment? And the, the answer came because of what I was doing to somebody, somebody who was living his own life. And I started seeing that thing on my skin. And what did I do? I started going into forgiveness. I started asking for forgiveness. This of forgiveness it took a long time. I couldn't know when. But over time, I started forgiving myself, forgiving the man, forgiving myself for doing the wrong thing. And that is what this part is saying. Most of us will be pushed to begin to seek Christ, seek God, seek heaven bound, seek love, only when situations have pushed us into it. But what Christ is saying here is this. You don't need to wait for challenges. You don't need to wait for troubles. You don't need to wait for sicknesses. You don't need to wait for situations, lack, and all the rest to begin to seek Christ. Seek ye first, and every other thing shall be added. For blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. When we begin to seek Christ wholeheartedly, seek Christ wholeheartedly, we realize self worth realize, lead in, don't wait for the pitfalls to lead us to seek Christ. We come with humble spirit to seek him, love him, live, express, evolve, and influence our environment, influence our family, friends, all around us. We shall be what? We shall be what? Comforted. Wrong thinking 
wrong thoughts, wrong speeches, wrong all these things. We do not need to get to this level before we begin to seek Christ. We seek Christ wholeheartedly with love, with humility. First, look at our environment. How did this world come into a situation? That's what puzzles me from time to time. Why are we? Look at the manifestations of the earth. Of no effort of ours, the sun comes, the rain comes, the storm comes. Provisions, the trees come and go. So with this scenario alone, it's enough to seek the force behind, the spirit behind these manifestations. And we begin to be expressions of his love. We begin to agree expressions of blessings to all those who cross our path. So these experiences brings us down and we start reaching out to the absolute truth of God. Jesus is saying in such situation, man whose sorrow is fortunate and through this, he comes to the realization of God. I'm very grateful to share in my little experience. I don't know if it has touched anyone or their clearer understanding, but this is the way I just feel and experience this beautiful attitudes that we should inculcate, live daily. No matter how old, no matter how young, continue to be in the teachable spirit. That spirit will be speaking and will become blessings to our world. Blessings, thank you. I said thank you, Aunt Nia. Antonia, it is just uh, so wonderful to have you here. And and I, I I'm moved because it's just so beautiful to participate in in watching truth being spread around the world. To knowing that our ministry is participating in that and and that you're doing it, you're spreading truth. So thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you. I hope you'll come back and join us again. And I won't go on and on because Antonia kind of summed it up, but I have just one more thing that I wanted to share about the Beatitudes. And I'm sorry that I did not mute myself earlier, but I found online that Eric Butterworth put together a 12 week course for Unity Centers on Discover the Power Within You. And it's really enlightening. And But I wanted to share you what he has to say about Blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness sake, for there is for there is the kingdom of heaven. And so Butterworth says this, and, and it, it's so appropriate, I think anyway. Every religion has met with opposition and persecution in the beginning, and Christianity is no exception. But the race has evolved out of its physical consciousness into a mental one, and by race he's saying the human race, into a mental one. And the crucifixions and stake burnings perpetuated by fanatics have about ceased. Now, persecution takes the form of an assumption of superiority by majorities and arrogance on the part of ecclesiastical authorities. We are fast outgrowing this man-made religion and the time is at hand when every claimant to religious authority will have to prove its claims by its works. Amen to that. In truth, amen. amen. Yes, amen, Antonia. We proclaim our authority. We, we, we proclaim truth. And so thanks for being with us today as Antonia, Antonia and I proclaim truth. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you.